I think Trump has an opportunity to connect with with. With, I think Trump has an opportunity to connect with the tech community around infrastructure projects specifically. So he's talking about a trillion dollar infrastructure plan. He wants to wire up, he wants to connect up the United States. I think we have the opportunity to wire up uh, all of our infrastructure for opportunities like aut autonomous software vehicles, um, opportunities for car to car communication, and all types of uh, IoT devices to enable. Safe, better safety profiles for workers on the road and drivers on so the road. So we just had Tom Siebel on the show and we said, who are the winners of that? Who, who are the winners in your mind? I think uh, we have a whole uh, uh, infrastructure, or we have a whole new network of, of startups that are playing to that space specifically. So we have companies in the security space that are, we have companies that are playing in the communication space. We have companies that are doing all new mapping software that I think uh, Trump will have an like, opportunity to take like, advantage like, of. Can you name some of these? So this is, so the, some of these are small companies, companies right. like Map, Mapper.ai, for example, is one of the companies we've and what do they invested do? in. And they are looking at how you map, uh, how you map and connect uh, all infrastructure devices and how you use that from a communication from car to, car to your license, uh, from a car to your, um, to, your, to your lighting pole, for example. And so, you know, one of the companies we mentioned was General Electric, uh, which has sort of tried to make its name or at least... Uh, talk about being a, a 21st century company based on the Internet of Things. Are they a beneficiary of this? I think GE is, is one of the companies. We've had a number of companies that are playing in the AI space, for example, and we've seen uh, GE being a, 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 an acquisitor of, the, of companies in the AI space. For example, um, I think Google's acquired about 11 companies. Uh, GE's played in that as well. Right. Too. We've had over 40 um, companies in AI acquired this year playing in that space specifically. I'm going to lower this conversation just a little bit. This is all very high end important stuff, but I'm nervous about having an echo in my apartment, which I think speaks to a bigger issue, which when you talk about all the Internet of Things and everything connected, I'm worried about being listened to, being hacked, et cetera. Yeah, sure. I think that's a good question, a good sense, of, uh, good challenge. So we're seeing things, uh, particularly around security, which used to play primarily in Wall Street, really going down Main Street. So we think about security as something that's going to be touching everybody, everything from Hacking into your appliances to your lighting system, for example, we have companies that were that today. One of our companies, Forescout, for example, enables you to see devices connected to your network that that they don't previously see. So if you have a, if you're a corporation, you have a million devices connected to your network. You plug in Forescout's uh, visibility um, and connectivity device, and they can detect up to 300,000 more devices you didn't even know were hanging off your network. So something like. A warehouse where you may have uh, an IoT or a mesh network that uh, is connected into your network but may not be necessarily visible right. from a security perspective. I just want to go back, if we could, to the infrastructure piece of this because I think there could be an investment opportunity potentially or not in some ways, uh, which is to say, do you think that the government in these big infrastructure projects is going to be willing to partner with small startups as opposed to the big companies like GE? Meaning, are they going to be more inclined? to have a service contract with a GE, which ends up then going downstream to some of these smaller companies, then going direct to them? And what does that mean? I think that's a fair question. And I think that's, that's one of the challenges that, that, that the administration will need to think about. Because sometimes some of the best innova innovation comes from the startups. And they were, but, but, the, but, but, they're, but right. the best but the best lobbyists are some of the larger ones. Palantir was in that. In that. Exactly. Palantir is a great example of that, but Palantir also spent an inordinate amount of money to sort of build out a lobbying system and a Washington right. system so that they actually had a front face to Washington in a way that so many of the smaller folks in Silicon Valley just haven't yet. And then my last question is, uh, Donald Trump's disposition towards technology, with the exception of Twitter, is not so much. Uh, and so to the extent that you think that technology is going to benefit from all of these infrastructure plans. Why are you so convinced that it's not going to be more the traditional stuff? Well, I think that I think that Trump's going to and has tried to get to know a little bit about Silicon Valley with his his summit last week. But the reality is that just touched, it's just the tip of the iceberg. He's really touching some of the larger companies. And the challenge that Trump faces is how does he get to know and understand a little bit more about what's coming along from an innovation perspective? Because I think that's what's really going to drive change in his administration. When you think about infrastructure and making that kind of investment, right. getting to know that's where he's got to start. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.